you are beautiful and loved and lovable exactly as you were initially created. You did not need to take on anything extra from this world. Any extra sense of conditioning, any extra sense of understanding, any extra sense of needing to develop new skills or needing to change your perception or change your sense of expression or your method of expression. Like you didn't have to change any of that. As far as the divine is concerned, Hey everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading for your moment, for your day, whenever this resonates for you. Well, no, actually we are gonna talk about something pretty specific today. Uh, but this is still a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, uh, oh Lord, you guys, I'm so out of practice right now. I don't even know, like, I don't even know what to say at the moment. Um, well, this isn't really a timeless reading because we're going to be talking about, uh, I mean, it is. It, oh God, Eric, get it together. I'm so sorry, you guys. What the fuck ever. It doesn't matter. Let's just get into it. Okay. Uh, before I really get started, um, I want to make sure that I remind you guys that we are having a benefit for Betsy of Fearless Intuition this Sunday, the 8th of August. Um, check my Instagram page. Um, I did post information there. I'm also going to post in the community tab today. Um, so stay tuned for all the details. Check the community tab here on my channel. If there's nothing there yet, by the time that you check it, it's definitely over on my Instagram page, Insta at, Inst I'm sorry, at divine underscore conversations. Um, but we will be having a benefit for Betsy. I don't exactly remember what time we're starting, but that's all in the information. Um, and it's going to be over on her channel, Fearless Intuition. Me and two other readers will be doing readings for you guys. Um, and all the benefits will be going to support Betsy during her healing journey. Yes. So $30 for a question. You can ask any one of us. There's three of us, me, the enlightened auntie and Mecca. We are all going to be doing tarot readings for you guys. You can um, send, you can get yourself uh, on the list on the roster early by sending your payment of $30 and your question to paypal.me slash fearless intuition. And you can choose who you have answering your question or you can let the fates decide, yeah? So um, information can be found in the description box below, in the pinned comment below, and then also check my Instagram page, which the link to that is down in the description box below as well, but that's at divine underscore conversations. Also check my community tab here on YouTube. Eventually, I'll get the information there as well, but the information is already on Instagram, yes? Okay, you guys. That's all the um, info, The all that's all the real announcements that I want to make before we get started. So um, we're going to talk for a bit first, okay? So we're going to have, I guess, it's not really story time. It's more like channeled message, channeled energy time, and then we'll get into the cards. Um, so as always, uh, there are just uh, timestamps in the description box below. However, I, I kind of recommend that you... Um, you stay tuned for the whole session because just because we may not be using cards in the beginning doesn't mean that there aren't valuable lessons or valuable messages for the collective. Yes. So what do we want to talk about? Well, first, I want to talk about the fact that I don't have my crystals. Hold on. OK, I got them. All right, cool. So uh, we officially are in or at the uh the lion's gate portal it is lion's gate weekend i will call it now i def it's definitely a whole weekend event because um this portal 
traditionally was celebrated or recognized between the 6th and the 8th of August, right? So this is literally the weekend of the Lion's Gate portal. And there is so much, there's so much that's happening. And at the same time, there's so much that's not happening, <laughs> right? We've all been in this holding period. I mean, for me personally, this whole week, I've just needed to rest and recuperate and recalibrate. Um, like I mentioned in happy hour this past Wednesday, which by the way, I highly recommend if you haven't seen the channeled message that came through for the collective um, and the reading that I did subsequently um, for the collective on Wednesday during happy hour, check it out right here, top right of your screen. Also can be, the link to that can be found in the description box below and the pinned comment below. Um, Cause we're definitely going to be piggybacking off of that message. Now I wanted to come through and do a morning coffee session um, kind of yesterday, but it didn't work out that way. Um, it was still in the works, Spirit is saying. Um, but it's all kind of part of this holding pattern that we've been in. And this holding pattern has been connected to, is directly connected to this upgrade or initiation or crossing a threshold into the next phase that is being ushered in by this uh, Lionsgate portal. Now, um, I personally needed to take the week to recalibrate because I, like I said on Wednesday, I did the, um, woo, sorry guys, I'm having trouble putting words together today. Um, I did the monthly readings for August and they were super, super powerful and yet they were extremely draining. Um, and I, this whole year has been a recalibration year for me, trying to figure out the best way for me to be in this position without overextending myself, um, learning to go with the flow, learning to listen to my body, learning to listen to my soul, learning to listen to spirit, learning to move with the flow of spirit. Instead of keeping myself to any sort of real strict uh, time frame or plan or whatnot, whatever, I found that I really just couldn't do that. I needed to allow myself to just go with the flow and do whatever comes up or do whatever is right for the collective at that time. And so part of that for me this last week has been literally taking time away to recuperate and to reground myself and to figure out what it is I really wanted to do for the collective this month. Uh, like I said previously, also, pre the, the last two months, June and July, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Like I had the plan early in the month or like way before and I followed through with it and everything went really, really well. This month, however, at least up until like this point, although I don't know, this month, however, has not been like that. This month has been, it's just been this one big empty void clear space, which technically is a good thing, okay? Um, just because there's nothing around doesn't mean that there's nothing coming. Just because there's nothing to see doesn't mean there is nothing at all. It's just that right now we're in a big, we're in a collective reset is what Spirit just said. Um, and so we're going to just have to, I'm hearing some, for some of us, we're just going to have to allow things to fall away in order for the next phase to come in. If you are dealing with things falling away from your life right now, or things just aren't seeming to go right or go well or whatnot, whatever, again, you really just need to go with the flow. Because there is a much bigger picture that we in this three-dimensional reality cannot see from this point of view. And it's not for us to see. That's not our part of the job, our part of the mission. Our mission or our job here, going through this ascension process, being in, literally being the ones, the advocates, the avatars that are here in the third dimension, okay? Our job is to be here 
and to be that bridge between the third dimension and the higher realms, the beings that are in the higher realms, because they cannot affect the physical reality. They cannot affect the third dimension. They need physical characters here in the environment to be able to have an effect on the reality, right? And so our part of the job is to be here in this world experiencing things from our own perspectives and then going going through the process or doing the work what is the work doing what it is we need to do to spiritually evolve and that definitely and technically translates into going through your day-to-day -day life and going through whatever it is you you experience or whatever it is that comes up for you it's not like ooh, <laughs> excuse me it's not like, um, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta blow my nose, hold on. Okay, I must really be getting back into channeling mode because now my allergies are, are flaring up. And I swear to you guys, I have not had an allergy flare all week. Not like this, at least. I've sneezed a few times, but, but this is, this is obviously channel our symptoms here for me. Okay. Um, where I was going with that before we paused, what I'm picking up on at the moment is that some of you are getting confused and are th feeling like you're lost. Uh, because what I'm getting here is that um, you're going through the motions, you're going through the experiences, but you keep seemingly hitting roadblocks or you're coming up against circumstances or situations that you are under the impression is throwing you off balance, is throwing you out of alignment, is throwing you out of whack, is distracting you, is taking you away from your process, is taking you away from what it is you're trying to work through or trying to do or trying to accomplish on a spiritual level. But what you're not realizing is that that is actually it. That is the work, okay? It doesn't look like your traditional, what we would traditionally think of as physical beings here in this three-dimensional reality of like getting up in the morning, going to your nine to five, doing that specific job or that specific work entailed within that nine to five or that specific job. And then you go home and you, you have the rest of your day or your life. Like, no, it doesn't, it's not like that. Spirit and this spiritual work is way more integrated into your life than just you having this separate place of work that you do all your spiritual work and then that's it. No, your spiritual work, your evolutionary work is intricately, spiritually evolutionary work, right, is intricately woven into your life into your day-to-day -day circumstances, into your experiences, your trials and your tribulations. Some of these smallest things, seemingly smallest things that happen in your life that trigger you, I'm feeling specifically and what I'm hearing specifically, that trigger you, those are your spiritual challenges, okay? And this is not a situation where like you pass, fail, and or you pass or you fail and or you're left behind or whatnot, whatever. No, it's so much more delicate than that. It's so much more, it's, it's not black and white like that, okay? So as we're moving into this next phase, as we're moving through this portal, okay? What I really, 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 really want people to start wrapping their minds around is the fact that your spiritual work comes in the smallest, seemingly smallest, seemingly most insignificant ways, okay? Those moments when all you really want to do, all you really can do is just sit there and be, those are moments where you're doing your spiritual work. Those moments where you feel extremely tired and lethargic and all you want to do is just rest. Those are moments when you're doing your spiritual work. And what you don't realize a lot of the time is 
by the time you reach that moment where your body is just so fatigued or your mind is just so fatigued or you're you're just so drained you just just you just want to rest you just want to lay there you just want to sleep you just want to meditate you have been going through an integration process beforehand you have been going through an energetic upgrade beforehand you just weren't consciously aware of it okay so what i feel is coming through for the collective as we move through this lion's gate portal as we move through literally this next level of initiation this next step up yes what i feel coming through for the collective is that we are going to be understanding coming to a greater understanding of how intricately spirit is woven into our lives and how intricately these these life lessons and this spiritual practice and these spiritual upgrades and this spiritual evolution is so intricately woven into our lives and it's woven into our lives in the most seemingly insignificant ways to the mind and to the ego but nothing is insignificant to spirit because spirit makes everything god source creator is in everything divinity is in everything everything is divinity okay so take note to the smallest things in life that seem in insignificant and see where you can find the connection. See where you can find the balance. Yes? Okay. Um, that was interesting. That was a really interesting tangent that I went on there. So what I'm doing at this point, you guys, is I am practicing my straight channeling. Instead of just always using cards. Um, okay. All right. All right. All right, let me give you a little bit of an example of how what I just said, what I just channeled for the collective, that message that just came through. I want to give you a little bit of an example of how that's translating into my life. So spirit has been slowly pushing me towards uh, allowing my channeling ability to just speak for itself and not, necessary, not necessarily always using cards, although I love using cards and spirit doesn't mind that. Um, but I've been getting pushed to, ju to just allow myself to channel, right? And one of the intricacies, I could, I guess I, could, I should say, or could say, or one of the ways that I've come to understand how I work is I am not the type of individual to sit in a meditative state, like sit in lotus position, meditating, connecting to the collective, trying to get a message. Anytime I try to do that, Spirit comes through and says, that, Eric, this isn't right for you. And there's a way that they do that specifically. I get this feeling in my back where when I'm doing something that isn't that I really shouldn't be doing or isn't necessary or something like that. And I found that if I just say to spirit, okay, you guys get the message ready. All right. Okay. Excellent. Case in point. This is how we're going to tie together what I was saying in the very beginning. So. My job, my part of the responsibility versus spirits or the higher realms or the beings in the higher realms, their job, right? I say, I've come to the point where I can make an agreement with them. And I said, okay, spirit. So I'm the chan I'm a channeler here, right? Yes, Eric. Yes, excellent. Yes, you are. Great. So what I need you guys to do is just get the med collective message together. Get everything together, you do your thing, and then I'm going to be down here in this physical reality doing my part, okay? Doing what it is is necessary for me to be the open channel for you, okay? And when we get into these moments, when I sit down here at the table or when I sit in my space ready to go, ready to do the message, all you guys got to do is just bring it in to me and I will speak it. There's no need for me to go do these sit there and, and try and be a good little boy and meditate and blah, blah, blah. No, it doesn't work that way for me, okay? The messages just come through. And I live my life in a way that I always kind of have. Of course, there were some things that got in the way because of my inability to cope with certain elements of life. But... Um, now that I've gotten better at that, I kind of live my life in a meditative state. 
And meditation doesn't always have to be sitting in lotus position with mudras in <clears throat> your eyes closed, maybe even chanting mantras or whatnot, whatever. It doesn't have to be that. You meditating could just be you sitting there on your porch, on the beach, in the grass, with your dog, with your cat, with your lizard, I don't know, with your like bearded iguana, like whatever, just <laughs> with your crystals, just sitting there, observing, connecting to nature. Like it doesn't have to, it, whatever it is for you is what works. So for me, I just get myself ready. I do my thing. I focus on being happy. I've been working with my inner child lately, you know, big time, right? That's a big part of this whole situation. We can get into that in a second. Um, and then I just say to spirit, all right, you guys get the message together. And when it's ready, you let me know and I'll sit down and I'll channel the message. Easy peasy. And then we can go into it deeper using cards, right? So for me, I mean, we're 20 minutes into this. I haven't even started the cards yet. This is going to be a long one. But like for me, this has been what this great reset has been for me. This next level of initiation. So things may have seemed really stagnant for you lately. Like I said, we've been in this holding pattern, right? But in this holding pattern, we have been provided with an opportunity to get more centered and connected with ourselves. For me, that has been spending all of my time alone. I don't want to hang out right now. I want to be with myself and my cats. I just want to stay here and live, be happy, connect with myself, connect with my inner child, which has been a huge element of this last phase, right? Like, literally, it's gotten to the point where it's literally the adult me and the kid within me, my inner child. My inner adult and my inner, inner, inner child have like become best friends. And I found myself treating myself like I am a parent to my younger self. Literally reparenting myself. And that specifically has helped me up my spiritual game like you guys would not even believe, okay? Inner child healing, and I kind of want to call it initiation, is a big element, big, big element to this next phase that we're moving through. And what helps you get there? None of, nothing, none other than solitude, okay? At this point, moment in our lives, you guys, solitary confinement. I mean, I don't like, Spirit was saying that on Wednesday because many of you or many of us are kind of feeling like we're in solitary confinement right now, but this is the breeding ground for your sense of sovereignty. This is how you get connected with your inner child. You get connected with yourself. You get connected with God's source creator. I mean, yeah, you can definitely do that through religious groups, through social groups and whatnot, whatever, but you will never, ever be able to cultivate your personal relationship with the universe, your personal relationship with yourself, your personal relationship with God, if you don't spend time alone. Because if you don't, you will always have the influence of someone else. Which isn't bad, you guys. It's, I'm not saying it's bad, but what I'm saying is, if you want to know God on a personal level, then spend time with yourself. Why? Because God is within you, just like it's within everyone else. God, source, creator, whatever you guys want to call it. It's within everything. And for you to know your place in life, your place in spirit, your place in this evolutionary process, the only way to do that is to spend time in solitude. And that's where we've been lately, isn't it? We've all been in, many of us, we've all been, and, and, and it's not even just like the pandemic, right? It's everything. I mean, the pandemic helps, but this is a time for us to really connect with Source. I really, I highly recommend, if you guys have not seen that video yet, um, the channeled message that I did, 
on Wednesday and the collective reading that I did on Wednesday during happy hour, again, check that out because it's a really powerful message and that's where we get into the bulk of why we're needing this time of solitude. Solitude, yes? Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second. I'm gonna handle my allergies <laughs> and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna get into some cards, yeah? Hold on. Alrighty, y'all. Um, also, I just realized that I paused I paused the video at 24 minutes and 44 seconds. <laughs> I love that. Okay, 444, y'all. Excellent. So, okay, here's the other thing. 444 has been, uh, uh, I've been seeing that quite a bit lately. And from my understanding of that, the main message that comes through with 444 is, yes, you are blessed. Yes, you are protected. Yes, you are guided. You are safe. But also there's a very specific message coming through with that. And that is, it is appropriate. I don't even want to say it's okay. I want to say it's appropriate. Okay. It is appropriate for you to be exactly who you are. Because who you are underneath all the fluff, underneath all the ego, underneath all the conditioning, Underneath, underneath all the indoctrination, who you are at the core of your being, I want to say both your inner child and your inner adult, is exactly who you are meant to be, is exactly who you were designed to be, is exactly who you were created to be, okay? And again, the only way for you to really get to an understanding, a true understanding of who that person is, is solitude. Because again, the more you surround yourself with people, which is not a bad thing, okay? I don't want to, I'm, I'm not saying we all need to be hermits and antisocial and fuck people and this. No, guys, what I'm saying is if you are going to know yourself and if you're going to understand your connection to God, source, creator, your connection to the universe, your connection to spirit, you have got to spend time on your own in solitude, y'all. The only way, the only way for you to get to know yourself, the only way for you to get to know your connection to all that is, is to remain in solitude until you've got an understanding of it. And then you can step back out there. You could even step back out there while you're doing it if you need a little break here or there. But that, but, okay, I'm beating a dead horse at this point. <laughs> We're going to get into some cards here. All right. We're going to be working with the, um, what is this? the Revelations Tarot. Uh, and then I'm going to be using another deck for clarity. I'm not sure exactly which one that would be, but we're doing that. Yeah. So let's get into this here and see what, car what other messages we have for the collective. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situation ships, circumstances, places, rom romances, and relationships in which we all need it the most. And also a special request for today's session. Please bring forward the guidance for the collective that is necessary at this time as we move forward through this Lionsgate portal over the weekend. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm going to give this five shuffles and we'll see what we've got here. Yeah, this is one. Now, first thing that came through, um, as soon as I mentioned, sorry, guys, I'm just looking at my uh, table here. Sorry. Um, first thing that I, I connected with, as I mentioned the Lionsgate portal, this is two, is I saw green. 
And I heard specifically heart chakra awareness, or I should say your heart chakra awareness is pivotal, is key here. This is three. Wait. Yeah, this is three. No, this is two. That was two. Shit, I've already lost count. Anyway, um, <laughs> your heart chakra awareness is pivotal here, is key here. This is, we're going to call this three. Um, and this is why we're being asked to spend so much time in solitude, okay? This is four. Because we need to come to an understanding of what's within our hearts so that we can understand what has been binding us, so that we can understand what has been holding us back, so that we can release that, yeah? This is five. Yeah, that's what I'm getting there. Very specifically. Uh, and, and for some of you, for some of you guys, you are being pushed to spend time alone. It's as if the universe is conspiring against you, right? Which is where I feel like this phrase of solitary confinement or this seeing it as a form of solitary confinement. This is why you're seeing it this way. Because the universe is pushing you at every chance that it gets, every stop to get you to spend time with yourself, as much time as you possibly can. It literally feels like <laughs> it's coming across as a conspiracy against you to stay the fuck home. And this is not about anything having to do with the pandemic. Even though, even though the pandemic kind of gives us a good excuse, especially with the surge in cases lately, whatnot, whatever, but it has nothing to do with the pandemic. Actually, to be quite honest with you guys, what I'm feeling, what Spirit is saying right now is the pandemic is a big part of this. Because Spirit wants us to get connected with it. And how else do you do that but spending time alone? Away from the sources that pull you away from it. Away from the distractions. Let's see. What have we got for the collective here? What have we got for the collective here? For this Lion's Gate Portal Weekend. Good. This is great. Okay. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck so far, we do have the eight of wands. All right. Uh, cards that have fallen down here face up. First card I saw was the chariot. Next, it was the page of cups. And then it's the three of wands. This is good energy, you guys. Okay. So what this is saying to us here, Chariot, we are in the process of moving forward, okay? And this is not just moving forward or like egoic plans or like, you know, oh, I'm starting this business or I'm doing this project or I'm, this is not moving forward in a three-dimensional way. This is your soul moving forward in terms of what it is it came here to do on the planet at this time, and that is evolve spiritually. Okay, that is what the chariot is representing here. Now, with that, you have the page of cups. And what the page of cups is speaking to is a form of re-identifying yourself, of changing the game. The page of cups definitely represents your sense of your inner child. Okay, it also represents you reconnecting with yourself on an emotional level, which is translating into a, a, a level of change redirection, changing your alignment, changing what it is you're focusing on, changing what it is you're, you're working on, changing what it is you're after. This could even be seen as a bit of a page of wands energy. But I feel like it's not the page of wands, it's the page of cups. I feel like it's the page of cups because this is about reconnecting with yourself on an emotional level, reconnecting with your inner child, getting past all of the fluff the superfluousness, all of the indoctrination, the, um, the, um, oh gosh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Indoctrination, the, um, societal pressures, whatever the societal alignments, like what society as a whole and mass, and then even in your 
in your personal circles, all of that influence, letting go of that, releasing that, or going beneath it, getting past it, and reconnecting with yourself, what it is you truly want to do, what it is you truly strive for, who it is you truly are underneath all of that, okay? And that's connecting us with this sense of drive here, and that's how we're moving forward, three of wands, okay? So in this moment of solitude, what I'm feeling here for us is that we have been re-identifying. We have been changing the game, but we've been doing that by connecting with ourselves on an emotional level and asking ourselves, where is it we want to go? Or where is it we need to go? Where is it that we are trying to go? Okay, this is definitely changing the landscape. I, what I'm feeling for the collective here, as we're moving through this Lionsgate portal, you guys, there is a massive shift internally, which is then re, uh, being, ex, uh, being externalized, right? That's how this works, okay? If you want to change your external reality, you have to change your internal reality or your internal energetic vibration first. And so we are being forced in some cases, some of us are willingly doing this. Other of us are going kicking and screaming, but it's okay. It's, it's okay. Spirit doesn't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter to spirit. Um, but we are being pushed, guided, in some cases forced, or on some cases we are being allowed the freedom to go within, to re-identify how it is we're moving forward, what it is we're preparing for, what it is we are putting our efforts into what it is we're striving for. That's changing for a lot of us. And as we go through and do this emotional cleansing, clearing, and healing with this Page of Cups energy, Eight of Wands energy at the, night, at the bottom of the deck, wow, Eight of Wands, Knight of Wands is underneath that. We are opening the floodgates. We are clearing the blockages. We are clearing the space, and we are getting into that drive. Clearing the space, Eight of Wands, so that we can move forward. Eight of Wands is a minor arcana version of the chariot, by the way, okay? And then the Knight of Wands, reactivating our spirit is what I'm hearing. Reactivating our sense of drive. Reactivating the reasons why we, as a spiritual being, incarnated on the planet at this specific time, okay? We have one more card here that has fallen. It's fallen face down. It's judgment, y'all. Holy shit. We are answering the call, kids. I want to get another pull on this judgment card here. Yeah? Because I'm feeling like there's more specifically that spirit wants to say with this. So what do you want to say with this judgment energy here, please, spirit? What do you want to say with judgment here? What is your advice to us? What is your question to us? What are you calling us towards? That's an effort. Okay. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Empress. This right there is that unconditional love, that nurturing, parent-like, motherly energy that says you are beautiful exactly the way you were created. You are exactly who you need to be. You have always been who you needed to be. There is literally a sense right now of getting past all of the conditioning and getting back to who it is you truly are at the core of your being. Letting go of all of the egoic pursuits and finally allowing your sense of spirit Represented by your inner child, by the way, Page of Cups, but your inner spirit letting that drive you instead of your ego and your mind. The Empress is at the bottom of the deck. Underneath the Empress is the Ten of Swords and the Four of Swords, okay? So what spirit is saying so far, we're clarifying temperance, I'm not temperance, judgment here. What spirit is asking us for or calling us towards? First and foremost, the message here is you are beautiful 
and loved and lovable exactly as you were initially created. You did not need to take on anything extra from this world. Any extra sense of conditioning, any extra sense of understanding, any extra sense of needing to develop new skills or needing to change your perception or change your sense of expression or your method of expression. Like you didn't have to change any of that. As far as the divine is concerned, you came into this existence exactly as you were meant to be with the tools that you were needed, that you needed, <laughs> with the tools that were needed for you to be successful in this lifetime. You were, you came, you guys, you came into this incarnation with the tools already. I mean, as soon as your physical body started to gestate within your mother's womb, you already had all the energetic tools you needed. You didn't need to acquire anything more, anything extra. This is the unconditional love of the universe coming through saying, we are asking you to love yourself for who you are. Think about that. Think about the amount of divine, unconditional love that is pouring down on you constantly and allow yourself to end the painful cycles. Allow yourself to end the painful associations. Allow yourself to end the painful attachments to people, places, things, circumstances, career arcs, anything like that. Let that go. Release it. And make a decision. It's time for you to make a decision, two of wands, about who it is you truly want to be. King of Wands. Who it is you truly want to be. What it is you truly want to do. King of Wands. And it's coming through as the King of Wands for a very specific reason, you guys. Because yes, the King of Wands is extremely selfish. He's extremely driven. He doesn't give a flying fuck what anyone else has to say to him about who it is he is or what it is he's doing. And at this point, you guys, this is kind of some of the energy that the divine wants us to embody. The divine is asking us to stop allowing external circumstances to define us. Stop allowing external circumstances and other people tell us who to be, what to do, how to act, how to live our lives. Because we were given the tools we needed before we even incarnated. We were incarnated with all of that. We don't need anything extra other than who we truly are. So this judgment, this call, this wake up call, this need for solitude is here. Because we are being asked to love and nurture ourselves the way div the divine loves and nurtures us. And, allows, and that allows us the opportunity to choose to step into the full strength of our power. King of Wands. Keep in mind, you guys, this has nothing to do with gender. Okay? This is not gender. The King of Wands. This is energy. This is what the King of Wands represents on an energetic level. And that's confidence. Bullheaded, stubborn AF, confidence out the fucking wazoo. I love this, guys. I really, really love this. I keep, I keep seeing things flying around. I can't tell if they're mosquitoes or if they're just like spirits. <laughs> okay. Um, clarification. Okay. After Turo. Okay. Here we go. All right. We're going to get into some clarification and I want to talk, I want to speak to the two figures. First and foremost, I'm going to speak to the two figures, and then I think I want to talk about the chariot energy. But the two figures we're going to talk to are the Page of Cups and then the King of Wands. 
okay? So this is literally you. This is the representation of your inner child, Page of Cups, and your inner adult, King of Wands, okay? And these two are best friends. And that and that's what I was saying before. That's how I've kind of come to understand it. It's like, I'm my own best friend. I'm my own best advocate. I am my own parent. I am my own friend. I am my own confidant, like all of that stuff, right? Like I literally have an image of me as an adult with like my inner child on my shoulders. Like I'm giving my inner child a piggyback ride and we're running around having the best time of our lives. You know what I mean? That's the understanding I've come to. And I encourage you guys to find that relationship within yourselves as well. Yeah. Now for me, it's a little bit, it's a little bit easier for me because I've always loved kids. Like even when I was a kid, when I was, when I was a kid and like we would have uh, family things like Thanksgiving or whatnot, whatever, or we would just like, there was a bunch of family over and my younger cousins were around. I was always the one running around having the best time with my younger cousins. Even though I was older than them, I was like, what, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I was always the one hanging out with the kids and having a, the best time with them. And I'm sure the adults loved it because it got them out of their hair, right? <laughs> Even to this day, I am the one sitting there with all the adults, probably with the kids right next to me, having a good time, paying more attention to the kids than the adults. Because sometimes the adults are insufferable, but that's okay. <laughs> but that's the relationship that we're trying to cultivate here. Yeah? Excellent. So let's get into some clarification. I should blow my nose first. Hold on. Okie dokie. Clarification. Yeah? I'm going to give this three shuffles. Four. Four is sufficient. Let's do it four shuffles then. One. Two. Three, and four. All right, we're gonna start with the Page of Cups here. So, messages from, from your inner child. What does your inner child have to say at this time? Page of Cups, what does your inner child have to say at this time for the collective? Oh, all right. Okay, at the bottom of the deck, you do have death. Okay, this is all. This is merely a transformation. But you guys, this death is this transformation and is translating into the massive change in humanity, the massive shift in collective consciousness, the big change that the whole of society is going through right now. That's what this is representing. That's what death is representing for the collective here, okay? Coming from the inner child. But the two cards that we have, that the inner, that your page of cups is being clarified by, that what your inner child wants to say, knight of cups and knight of wands, all right? So this is getting connected with your heart. Knight of cups is, is representing moving forward with what your heart truly desires. And that definitely goes against the grain of what society has told you, who you have conditioned to be at this point, right? I'm sorry, who you have been conditioned to be at this point, right? That goes, completely goes against what your, your, your personal sense of con, uh, uh, um, conditioning would say for you. And instead getting back to what your heart truly says. But then that also translates into you getting into your spiritual mission, Knight of Wands. Your heart holds the key to what it is your soul wants to accomplish in this lifetime. And the only way for you to get connected with that is for you to get connected with your heart and do the heart chakra healing that is necessary to remove the discrepancies, to remove the blockages, to remove the pain and the turmoil, yeah? So you can get back to the core of what it is you came here to do as a spiritual being incarnated in, incarnating in a physical reality, a physical experience. And it's not going to look like what traditional things or traditional spiritualism will tell you. 
That's another element of releasing the, 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 the conditioning here, you guys. Your mission is whatever it is you are vibing with. Whatever it is within that is within your heart. Your, your mission in life, your spiritual work in life does not have to have some sort of traditional look to it. It is whatever resonates with you on a soul level. Whatever it is you are driven to do in this world, wherever it is you are driven to go, to see, to experience, to explore, whomever it is you are driven to connect with or communicate with, that is your mission. Your mission is just as specific to you as spirituality, okay? There are as many forms of spirituality on this planet as there are individuals on this planet. Billions and billions of forms of it, right? So now for you to get connected to this and thus get to connected to your mission, Knight of Cups, Knight of Wands, you must connect with your inner child. It is the child within us, the spirit within us, that is going to bring great change. Okay. So with that said, let's talk about the King of Wands then. What does the King of Wands have to say for the collective? Please, Spirit. King of Wands for the collective. King of Wands for the collective. King of Wands for the collective. Okay. Overall energy, you do have the Two of Cups. All right, so this is your bond with yourself, your inner reality. You have quite a number, quite a few cards here. All of them came out face down, by the way. First thing I want to mention, first three cards here, you have the Nine of Wands, the World, and the Chariot. All right, so what the King of Wands is saying to you is, or to the collective is, keep going. Keep pushing. Don't stop now because there's a massive change coming. A massive reset I even want I just heard with the world here okay and you're moving forward towards this and what I'm what I'm getting with this specifically is that you have to keep going nine of wands because there is a big collective change happening there is a big collective shift happening the world and that that shift that change whatever is coming to a close in this time period right now is going to set you up directly for you to take off with your sense of spiritual mission or whatever it is you're here to do in your lifetime and whatever it is you're here to accomplish in your lifetime. And I want to be very clear. That could also be something very specific to you. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that is going to make a, a, a massive, have a massive effect on the collective of people. It could be something very specific to yourself and your soul during this time. Okay. But whatever it is, the King of Wands is saying to you, remain confident, remain steadfast, remain sturdy, and keep pushing. Keep going. Nine of Wands. Because there is a big collective reset that is happening that is going to free you up to move forward on your mission, the Chariot. Okay? Three more cards here. <laughs> okay. Um... You have the Four of Pentacles in, rever in reverse, the Four of Cups upright, and then the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. So this is kind of an energy talking about how, you know, because the King of Wands came out with the Two of Wands here, okay? So there's a choice that you need to make in terms of what it is you really want to do. And what this is saying here, this is actually really awesome. I'm loving this because what this is saying here is you're finally letting go of some things that you've been holding on to for dear life. And look, this is the after tarot, right? Look at how death is creeping up on this guy right here saying, you yeah, you're going to have to let go of something, buddy. Right? Death has been creeping up on y'all, on us, talking about, okay, it's time to let go of some of those pentacles there, buddy. Yeah. But this is in reverse because you let go. You are letting go, okay? You're finally getting yourself off the karmic hamster wheel, I want to say, seven of pentacles in reverse. No longer continuing to do something over and over and over again, expecting a different result. Case in point, going against the grain. 
taking the path, the road less traveled, off the beaten path, off of the path that has been tread by people that have come before you, that society says, do it this way, follow this path, because we know we can get success this way. Okay, but that's not the only way we can get success. I mean, somebody had to be the trailblazer at some point, right, to create this path to begin with. Why can't we create new paths? And thus you have the Four of Cups pouring that shit out saying, you know what, I'm done with this. This is not an opportunity that I want to take advantage of because this is the same shit over and over and over again. I've had enough of this. I'm ready to try something new. I'm ready to be a trailblazer in my life. So no, kindly, I will not be accepting this opportunity, right? That's beautiful energy, you guys. And that's how you step into your king of wands. Shut the fuck up. At the bottom of the deck, you guys, you have the Two of Cups, okay? Now, the Two of Cups is representing the bond and the union within yourself, the union of masculine and feminine within yourself. That bond that helps you move forward, that connection with yourself, that gets you in alignment with what it is you're truly wanting or needing or desiring to accomplish in this life and gets you moving forward, right? Two of Cups, that bond within you that balance of masculine and feminine within you. Take a wild guess as to what is underneath the Two of Cups right now. I'll give you a hint. We're clarifying the King of Wands. And with this Two of Cups, we're talking about the bond of masculine and feminine within you, working together in tandem. Take a wild guess as to what's underneath the Two of Cups right now. The Queen of Wands. With the Ace of Swords underneath that, woo, to the Knight of Swords, y'all better fight back against the establishment, the Knight of Swords, to the, oh my God, you guys, to the Hierophant, to the Nine of Pentacles, to the motherfucking Tower, to that Ten of Cups then, to the Page of Cups. Look at this shit, you guys. Look at this shit. Because the Ten of Cups represents the family, right? In the before Tarot, the Ten of Cups is... Uh, is depicted as a family, mother, father, sister, and brother, running through the rain to get back to shelter. Right? And I mention that because it's the representation of the mother, father, the sister, and the brother. And that's what we have here. We have a family. We have mother, father, sister, brother, grandpa, and it looks like a cat. But this is talking about that union. The trifecta. Right? Uh, 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 body, mind, and spirit. Um, what, I, don't know, I don't know how you say it religiously. What is it, what is it religiously? It's um, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or masculine, feminine, and inner child. Ten of Cups. There's the Page of Cups. There's the inner child. We have the masculine, the feminine, the mother and the father in the king and the queen of wands. Right? Then we have the child, the inner child, the spirit, the page of cups. And then we have the ten of cups. That family union within. But all of this energy, you guys, brings truth, brings knowledge, brings awareness. Solitude brings awareness of self. And then you have that sword of truth to fight back, knight of swords, against what society or the establishment want you to believe, how they want to indoctrinate you. This is why you need your sovereignty, nine of pentacles. And what brings sovereignty? Solitude. Because then you get to know yourself. Then you get solid in yourself. And you don't need institutions like this to tell you who to be, how to act, where to go, how to live your life. And thus, the whole system crumbles. The tower. And it all comes from this. The two of cups. The balance, the union, the harmony within yourself that gets you in alignment to move forward. The chariot. Because the chariot represents that harmonized energy. 
the balance between light and dark, good and bad, positive, negative, masculine and feminine. That balance drives you forward. Y'all, this is some epic shit. The last thing that I want to talk about here before we close this reading out, because we're already an hour in. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is the chariot. Yeah. So let's clarify the chariot here for the collective. What is the chariot, please, spirit? What message does the collect does the chariot bring to the collective? Ah, specifically, what are we moving forward towards? Yes. I just heard an unconditionally loving experience. I like that. Okay. What is what messages do you have for the chant for the collective with the chariot, please, spirit? What messages do you have for the collective with the chariot, please, spirit? What messages do you have for the collective with the chariot? What are we moving forward towards with the chariot, please, spirit? What are you moving forward towards with the chariot, please, spirit? That's enough. Okay. At first, I was thinking they didn't want to tell us because nothing was coming through, and then... Well, and what we got here, the first card that came out for this is the Four of Swords, right? And that was kind of telling me, um, well, what this is saying, actually, we have the Four of Swords, we have the Seven of Cups, we have the Ten of Swords, and then we have the Ace of Cups. We also have two more cards here, but we'll get to that in a second. What this is saying so far, with the Hierophant and the Two of Cups and the Tower at the bottom of the deck, then the Queen of... Okay, so we're back to some other stuff there, right? <clears throat> What we're what what we need to know in terms of what we're moving forward towards right now, you guys, is an understanding that we need to just like stay solid, okay, stay grounded, stay calm, stay in as much of a meditative state as we can, because there is a lot of confusion around right now, okay. There's a lot of chaos, a, a lot of emotional chaos, and not necessarily within us. It feels like it's around us, right? Like there's a storm raging around us and we're the ones that are here just kind of like staying calm, staying centered, staying grounded, being that rock, that solid rock during the time of chaos, right? Okay. But you see, that's because things are coming to a close. The Ten of Swords, again. Things are coming to an end. Things are shifting, things are changing. And so you need to stay centered and grounded in unconditional love right now as we're moving forward with this chariot energy, right? But we have two more cards here that have fallen face down. You have the page of swords in reverse, and then you have the lovers. So this is not about arguing. This is not about fighting. This is not about trying to prove your point. This is also not about trying to seek external information. It also kind of feels like this is not about, this is not a time or this is not about seeking any more information at all. You have what you need. You have the understanding that you need. And this is about choosing you and yourself and what's best for you overall over anything else. That is your vice or virtue type of situation with the lovers. At this point, it's not even a question, a page of swords in reverse. It's not even a question. It's a choice, but at this point, the answer, the, the, the choice seems pretty clear, doesn't it? There's no need to, to question any longer. There's no need to seek any more information. There's no need to study any more. However that translates for you. The choice is clear at this point. Okay? And for many of us, the choice has already been made. That's also why the Page of Swords is in reverse here. The choice has been made. And that's why we're moving forward. And that's why there's big shifts happening. And that's why we have this Ten of Swords energy and why we're being asked to just settle Four of Swords. Okay? And I don't mean settle in terms of, like, compromising. I mean settle in terms of, like, stay grounded, stay level, stay secure in the choice that you made, in the position that you're in. And move forward with that. Because we are moving forward. Okay? Wow, you guys, that was a lot. Um, closing Oracle Guidance. Ooh. Ugh. I 
can't get it out. Okay. We're going to go with the fairy forest today. All right. Closing Oracle Guidance for the collective here. We're going to use the fairy forest. Yeah? Five shovels. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right. Closing Oracle Guidance for the Collective Food Spirits. Closing Oracle Guidance for the Collective Food Spirit. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. There it is right there. We have card number seven, which is awesome because the chariot is card number seven. Isn't that cool? But this is the green witch. Fresh, new, spring. I mean, obviously we're in the summer months right now in the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, but like at the same time, this is beautiful. All right. The Green Witch. When you are pure of heart, the whole world is full of potential. And this is the message from the innocent Green Witch to you. She is green, as in the fresh new shoot from the seed pushing urgently towards the sun. She is green and connected to the earth, flowing with the cycles of nature. She is green in that she looks as much to the natural world for company, friendship, and fulfillment as you currently do to fellow humans. She is your reminder to begin to reconnect to the wild green world, to the fairy forest all about you, to go back to a place where you empty yourself of expectations and stories and knowledge and just admit that in some circumstances and at some times, you are as a babe, inner child. You are newborn. And in that moment of unknowingness and of admitting and embracing your own powers of renewal, you can finally learn what it is as you are here to learn. Or, I'm sorry, you can finally learn what it is you are here to learn. Be new. Be fresh. Be unwise. Be unknowing. Be innocent. And then the new cycle can truly begin. Whoa. There you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much. If you've been here throughout this whole reading, this whole session, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And honestly, I, I, and this, this isn't even about like me saying, well, thank you so much for paying attention to me for an hour. No. What Spirit is saying here is thank you for being dedicated to this experience, to your expansion, to your growth, to your healing. Thank you for, your, for showing your dedication to us, says Spirit. I love you guys so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>